Hello everyone, I'm David Lindsay and I'm going to be a guest on the Online Prosperity Show. I'm co-founder of Phantom Leap Education and I'm here to share with you the five steps towards improved vitality, how resilience helps you grow and how we all have been through it the last few years and how it can come out better in the end due to these tough times, these tough times that we go through each and every day. It's a show you're not going to want to miss. I'm excited to share this with you. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you the integrated health and vitality coach, David. David, how are you, my man? I'm fantastic. Thank you, Prosper. I'm so excited to be sharing this time with you. And we've already had a fantastic conversation. And I'm just ready to keep that momentum rolling and share, share you know, some of our experiences with the listeners. Bruh, when you were telling me about your story, I was humbled. I literally wanted to actually stop and really reflect so we can connect. But I thought, wait a minute, we're here to create for our audience and we might as well capture yeah. all the vital um, you know, topics you were talking about. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm humbled to be presenting to you David, who's been an athlete all his life. Um, he's been playing in the lower grades of the Sydney, of South Sydney in, in rugby. And he's also been an yeah. arm wrestling champion and also an MMA catch a fighting um enthusiast and he's you know he's been amongst the top athletes he's worked around them studied them and he's found huge gaps in what is actually missing between the actual activity of um you know athletes athletes and sports and also the corporate world but today we're yeah. just going to be talking about his rise um you know and all the adversities that he had to come through in order for him to actually create for and relate to his now audience um, and through his keynote that he talks about worldwide, the five steps towards improved vitality. Now, do you know something, David? I could go on and on and talk about stuff that I know nothing about. Why don't you tell us a <laughs> little bit about yourself and pretty much how you actually got started on your journey and, you know, to to what you're doing today. Yeah, and thank you very much for having me as a guest on the show. Really, it all started all the way back when I was a young kid. Growing up, I was never the biggest. I was never the fastest. But what I was, I was the strongest, both physically and mentally. And that has really helped me throughout every element of my life. I started playing rugby league when I was 12 years old. And even being a little bloke, I was tough. As I said, mentally tough physically tough and I just love getting in there amongst the big boys and I got called when I was 14 years old so I've been playing for two or three seasons across to play for South Sydney so I was a Cronulla junior and got brought across to South Sydney unfortunately I suffered a knee reconstruction when I was 17 which as a 17 year old you know the sport gets pulled away from you and you think that the world has ended but I'm not going to let little obstacles hold me back so I went back and I played with South Sydney again. And then I also played with Newtown in semi-professional football. At the ripe old age of 22, I suffered my second knee reconstruction. And I sort of went, okay, maybe this is my sport. But by this time, I was incredibly strong as a kid growing up because that was the one thing that I could do. I can't make myself taller. I can't make myself, you know, all these other things, but I can make myself stronger. So I used to just train and train and train and then I got picked up by a bloke to do arm wrestling and I was very good at that I, I beat guys that were much bigger than me I beat bodybuilders again people think it's just about brute strength but it's not it's about mental strength as well technique and being able to beat them mentally before you even get on the table unfortunately when I was in Corfu Greece I was there for a mate's wedding on my way to go in some professional arm wrestling tournaments in the states I was there and I snapped my arm, arm wrestling. So straight away, that obviously ended my girlfriend at the time, which is now my wife. I'm very, very lucky with that. We had to stop our round the world trip, come back to Australia and get my arm operated on. What happened though was when they put a plate in my arm, they hit a nerve and my arm become paralyzed. So the ripe old age of 23, a former athlete, 
I was a personal trainer. I was a coach. My whole world got stripped from underneath me because who's going to want someone that can't use their arm? But again, that was just another obstacle that I overcame because I went, what? I can't let these outside circumstances beat me. So I did everything I could to get the strength back in my arm and get, get things moving again. And again, that's when mental resilience come into it. And then from there, I thought, okay, I've had two knee reconstructions playing football. I've broken my humerus arm wrestling. Okay, why don't I try kung fu? Why don't I try jujitsu, kickboxing, wrestling? And I got into that and worked my way up through the grades to black belt and went, okay, let's really test ourselves. You can do stuff in the dojo or in the gym, but let's test it in the cage. So I went out and had cage fights. And that really is where everything moved everything shifted because especially coming across my wrestling coach still a very dear friend of mine but he gave me so many life lessons that i have taken not just from the fighting world but across into the corporate world and that's where my speaking kick started because at first i saw with speaking i never even knew it as a profession i knew of eric thomas les brown tony robbins everyone has heard of those guys i thought man, these guys are gods. What what do I have to say? What do I have to give to the world? And it, and it was really a throwaway conversation with my wrestling coach where he goes, David, I want you to look at the boys here. He was at a training camp and he goes, I'm the leader of the group. Now, these were men mountain. And I took that in and I thought, you know what? I am. And that really changed the trajectory of my life. Fighting has a limit to it speaking doesn't so then from there i went and did some speaking courses i went to see eric thomas and i actually won won an event to a boot camp a three-day boot camp for speaking and i started to i was doing really well and i thought you know what there's something here i have a message to get out there and then one thing led to another and then it, it led to my speaking and then speaking like in 2020 the whole world got shook up, as did speaking, as did everything. So we had to, again, that was another obstacle to overcome. So then it was just overcoming obstacle after obstacle. And that's what I believe really everything in life is. There's obstacles, but there's ways to overcome it. You can go around it, over it, under it, through it, but just keep moving forward. Absolutely. You know, just listening to your story, even if you, you've told me and you relating to it again, is just an epitome of, you know, people that really push through adversary, no matter what comes their way. And I do appreciate that hard times happen and getting past them is a mental game. And you have uh, shown that, um, you know, through the way that you have, um, you know, accomplished everything in life. Now, I was just really trying to look for a metaphor of how, you know, you went from the knee injury to the arm, um, you know, to the arm wrestling injury as well. And whatever then happened after that. Um, I don't know if you know that uh, quotation that says, um, if you can't walk, crawl, if you can't crawl, um, you know, just keep going, just keep moving. That is yeah. you personified you know your knees got buckled mm. and you see you said okay what's the next thing <laughs> <laughs> you went into your arms you almost lost an arm and you're like okay i can still use my body and my brain now yeah um you know you're using your mouth and it's literally um getting you to see all these uh people and go through all of these things so in mm. all these um adversaries that you've been going through what what has been the biggest lesson that you have taken um you know with because so much has happened any normal person would have quit yeah yeah and uh, that really takes me back to the first talk that i ever did and it was on a topic life's lessons and when people think about lessons in life quite often you think about school you think about university you, your mind automatically goes to these things whereas my mind went to the wrestling mats and the three great lessons that I learned from wrestling. And it's remember to breathe. Because so many people, when they're stressed, when when everything's just hit the fan, like we've been through the last few years, they just forget to breathe. But breathing is the oxygen. It doesn't matter stressful times. You can be in a choke. You can be in a submission. But remember to breathe. 
and your brain relaxes. So remember to breathe, embrace the grind. Like Jim Rowan says, that, that we life is seasonal. We have summer. After summer comes autumn. After autumn comes winter, comes spring, comes summer. So winters, they might be tough. They might be long. But eventually there's going to be spring coming. But also on top of that, winter may be hard and it may be long. But don't sit in the corner and cry about it. Put on your snow gear and get out and ski the slopes. Because there's so many different ways that we can turn a negative into a positive. And it all starts off with your mind. So that's the second one is to embrace a grind. Life's going to throw stuff at you. You might zigzag, do head movement, move around, but just keep moving. Don't throw your hands up and quit and turn around and walk away. And the third one follows off the back of that is to never give up. So long as you can, like you said, if you can't run, walk. You can't walk, crawl. You can't crawl, just slither. Just keep moving. So never, ever, ever give up. Because it's when you give up, you have those regrets. And I don't want to be sitting on my rocking chair when I'm 70 years old going, if only, if only I had have done this podcast with Prosper, if only I had have tried this, if I'd, I'd rather get out there and have, and have the fear of rejection as opposed to the fear of regret. Because when you get rejected, you can learn from it, you can grow, you can evolve, you can come at it from a different angle. But with the regret, you can never undo that. And I don't want to, I'd never want to have regret in my life. Absolutely. And I, I, just to, you know, uh, finish up that statement that adversity actually offers you valuable insights because from what mm -hmm. you're saying, you've learned quite a lot from the adversity that you went through. Yeah. And this is your, this was your chance to actually gain valuable insights and truly learn from the mistakes and also mm -hmm. the transversities that you went through. You know what I mean? So I really appreciate yeah, that. Same. Now you mentioned something about crying about it. You see at the at the end of the day, some of us are entitled. You know, life is supposed to work in a certain way. We're supposed to get results. <laughs> in, you know what I mean? I'm supposed to yeah. be born, go to kindergarten, go to university, get married. Everything has to happen. Like I've watched yeah. it and seen it on TV plus commercials. What 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 is it that you can tell somebody who has maybe a spanner thrown in the works and now they are thinking to themselves, how do I get past this? Like what, what sort of, um, you know, mindset does one need to have in order for them to actually step up and keep, keep going? Yeah, a hundred percent. And what you said just before, I think is perfect because you don't really know yourself until a spanner gets thrown in the works. You don't really know how strong you really are until a spanner gets thrown in the works because I know with my speaking and with Phantom Leap education, you know, when things are, if it's going smooth all the time, you're not trying hard enough because you really, in football, in arm wrestling, in fighting, in any element of life, you want to really be pushing the boundaries. Everyone says get outside of your comfort zone. And I truly believe that. You don't grow if you're not uncomfortable. And like I said, we were talking about before, my wife had a terrible accident when my daughter was seven months old and her leg got shattered. So many people said, David, how did you overcome that? What I would have just been at home. Some of them were saying, I would have just been at home if it happened to them. And I go, what, what's the point in that? Because anytime there's negativity, I broke my arm, my arm went paralyzed. My wife shattered her leg. She almost lost her leg, but there's benefits that come from it. My daughter was seven months old at the time. I had to take six months off unpaid work and look after the both of them. But that was time that we're never going to get back. And I truly loved that time. Helping my daughter grow up, being the father figure that I could for her from when she's a little baby. She's out the back now. And I still, we still have that bond. And same as with my wife, having to look after her during that time. She was in a wheelchair for over six months. And it's just, yes, tough times happen to everyone. You can go and hide in the corner and cry about it or you can do something about it and that's when you really learn something about yourself is when you're in the midst of it 
learning, growing, evolving, and finding out how strong you really are. Fantastic. You know, there's something that I normally do when I bring people onto the show is I attempt to get them laughing within the first five seconds of me meeting them. That sort of breaks the pattern and it actually creates those feel good uh, emotions. And they say laughter is the best medicine. Now, when I was talking mm. about your story to you, I found that you really have a good sense of humor around what has happened with you. And yeah. you don't seem to have a problem with that. And it might seem unthinkable to find anything funny about what <laughs> you've gone through. But there we were, we were laughing about it as if it's, oh, we it's, it's nothing. How important is it for somebody to actually accept that and still find a sense of humor, um, you know, after things like that have happened to them? Yeah, I learned when I was young, a lot, a lot of times you either laugh or you cry. So why not choose laughter? Yes, there, there's tough moments. And I'm not saying that I never cry. No, of course I do. I get worried like everyone else but I just don't stay there. You have choices. You can stay in that misery. You can stay in that pain or you can get up, do something, change yourself mentally. Like I said, when my wife had the accident, that was time that we got to spend together. And I truly uh, still cherish that time that we had. When I broke my arm, she looked after me and that was time that we're never gonna get back. So each time I've had that obstacle, it's also given me a chance to tack. To, to change the direction. When you're in the moment, you really can't see the end of it happening. But just know, day after day after day, you're getting closer to the end and it just builds your resilience. Because I I don't want an easy life. No, And really, we shouldn't aim for an easy life. I, I love this saying as well. I can't remember who said it off the top of my head. Don't ask for an easier life. Ask to be stronger. Yep. And that's what these bumps in the road, they make you strong. They toughen you up. And that's where we need to be. We need to be, and people say that tough, if you're tough, that's toxic. It's not. Feminine, females, males, anyone, we can be tough. Mentally tough, mentally strong, mentally resilient. And then you can help other people along the way as well. And that's what I truly believe with speaking and with Phantom Leap is I can help thousands and thousands of people so it'd be really it'd be selfish of me not to absolutely i i absolutely believe and treasure and honor your journey and it seems like you've actually made peace with everything that has happened to you mm. because you know I, I do understand you know there's no one has time to play the blame game or blaming others <laughs> for what would have happened you know i would have started looking yeah. to see how can I sue the guy who broke my arm and whoever buckled my knees? You know what I mean? But moping around and feeling sorry for yourself will do you no good do and will actually sabotage the ability to come up with solutions. Now, while you were trying to get up on your knees, I mean, for lack of a better term, or maybe crawl on your elbows that, <laughs> you know, were gone like that, COVID came about and that yeah. would have just maybe taken you totally out of the water. How did you cope? It it didn't. Like I was in the process back in 2019 because I manage a gym as well. So I was in the process of picking up my speaking like because I was getting inquiries about traveling here, traveling there. And I'll just give a quick story. My favorite time of speaking was I dropped my daughter off at school. I live in Sydney. I flew down to Melbourne where you're at. I did a talk. I flew back. I picked her up from school, dropped off at soccer training, and then went and did the talk again in the city, came back, and my wife had dinner on the table. So I'd spoken in two different um, states and made a massive impact and then was still home in time for dinner. And yeah, sorry, that that's just off topic a little bit. I just love being able to make an impact as much as I can. But yeah, I was in the process of winding down the gym and handing that over to one of my mates who's a supervisor underneath me and COVID hit. And like with everyone, especially down in Melbourne, it shook, shook the world up. Everything went locked down. Gyms, locked down. Speaking, locked down. Anything, face-to-face -face meetings, locked down. But the benefit of that was we can now speak over Zoom. This is more acceptable. I'm talking from Sydney to you down in Melbourne. I speak from here in Sydney over to India. I speak to uh, Canada 
America. I've got one coming up in Paris and I'm all doing it from the comfort of home. Yes, I love getting out there and traveling and speaking face-to-face -face in these places, but this is a great second option. So again, that's I'm not sitting in the corner waiting for stuff to happen. I'm getting up and I'm making it, making it get done. And I was also coaching a lot of people beforehand and doing it face-to-face. And then I had some people approach me and go, David, have you ever thought about doing it online, creating a company and doing these courses online? And I'm not very good at IT. I'm good at just turning it on and I can I can rap on the mic like you wouldn't believe. But IT, I've got no idea about that. So we created Phenom Leap Education. And what we did was we put this course online. So now it was no longer local but it's truly become global. And then we've transitioned from B to C to B to B to create this 12 month online course, which is all, it's designed at middle management because they get stressed from the top down and also from the bottom up. And that's our three pillars to high performance online course. So really it's enabled me like with an injury. This was an injury to speaking, but you have to look at different angles. How has it helped you? How has it helped me evolve as a person as a speaker and as a business. And if you're looking for good, there's good. If you're looking for bad, there's bad. So you have the choice. Look for the good. Fantastic. <clears throat> While I was, you know, uh, combing through your pod, uh, your uh, website, I came across this quote that really, really got me thinking, um, you know, and, and, and then you mentioned that motivation is, what was the statement? Motivation is like uh, taking a shower. We need to do it daily. And yeah. then I, you know, just listening to you speak, I can hear the, the passion, the enthusiasm and everything else. Now, there's something about motivating people. All right. Mm. But if you don't make them wiser, then we just have motivated idiots out there. How, yeah. how best, <laughs> how best can people learn from you, because I think people are really getting, um, you know, um, motivated and really getting to like your story and want to know more. And uh, get, they're getting hungrier to tap mm. into the, the wisdom that you have to show. So you mentioned you've got a 12 month course. Can you walk us through your programs and how people can actually um, align themselves to, to the greatness that you're creating out there? Yeah, certainly. So like I said, we do have a B to C. And at the moment, it's an incredible... There's, it's really cheap and affordable and it's all done online. And we modified that and that's through phenomleap.com.au, our website. And what it is, it's a three pillars to high performance. So this gives you systems and strategies to smash it both personally and professionally. Because like you said, motivation, you can have a whole heap of motivation going on, but if it's not focused in, what are you motivated for? It's like like you have a dragster and its wheels are spinning and the finish line is that way, but you have it pointed that way. So it's going in the wrong direction. So and that's what we do in that three pillars of high performance. The first one is mindset because really it's all about getting that strong mindset, that growth mindset. And so many people, they're caught up in the fixed mindset. So we go through that course and it takes a couple of weeks. Nothing happens overnight, but what it does, it, it really shows you also studies and it gets you to do work on to show you that really we all have that neuroplasticity ability. We all have that ability to learn, grow and evolve. So I was actually talking with a bloke about this this morning about who's heard the saying that you can't teach an old dog new tricks. And then, you know, so many people go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I go, who believes it? And you still get the majority of people putting up their hand and then you go, okay. So apparently you can't learn anything after year 27. So who he became, a I became a parent when I was 30. And I, I believe that I'm doing a good job. And then you get them to do some drill, like pat pat on the head while they're, while they're patting their nose or whatever. And you get them to do that. And you can learn. It's just about having that open growth mindset. So that's the first one. The second one is creating your own unique roadmap. Because like I said, you can have the wheel spinning, but you don't know where you're going. So a lot of things, a lot of these courses that I've done myself, because I've spent so much money investing in myself. And that's what I tell people to do is invest in themselves. They're the best tool that they'll ever have. 
but a lot of them, they go, okay, where do you want to be? And you go, okay, I want to be here. I want to be up in this corner. But they don't find out where you're starting. So if you want to go here and you're starting up in the other corner, it's a different angle than if you're starting down here. So knowing where you are. And then we go through a whole process of creating your own unique roadmap. And then following the footpath, people have been there and done that. So like Bruce Lee says, you take what works and you discard what doesn't. And then on top of that are my five steps towards improved vitality because you can have all of the tools, but if you don't have the energy, you don't, oh, you just don't feel like doing it. You're not going to do it. And then it's about building up your confidence because whether I'm a salesman or whether I'm a speaker, what, whatever I'm doing, if I'm a guest on your podcast. Imagine if I was to come and go, prosper, you know, I really think that this is it. I No, people don't believe it. Whereas I go, I believe in this program. I believe it's the greatest program out there. It's got all the tools to help you succeed. And it gives, and it's not overnight. It might be a long journey. It might be a six, six year, six month journey, but it's going to be a, a long time. Don't worry about these overnight success stories. They very, very rarely happen. And then on top of that is to execute because you can have you can have the best um, gun there or you can have the best bow and arrow. You can pull back, but if you never pull the trigger or never let go, why have all of these tools there at your disposal and yet you never, ever use them? So that that's the three pillars to high performance in a nutshell. Fantastic. I'm going to have to literally um, go through the stuff that you are presenting because there's just so much fire um, you know, in your belly there. Um, and I really appreciate you bringing that to the show today. For real, those that are going to be editing this show will definitely um, have, and those that are going to be watching this show will definitely be inspired. Okay. Now, obviously, there's that one person, David, we all know that one person, not that we are here to work with them, but they're just sitting there and then they've just been uh, eating their popcorn, watching this show while well, they're motivated. And then it's all just going to maybe fizzle out as soon as they hit next on the next video or go on TikTok mm. and watch some dog twerking. <laughs> um, <laughs> right. You know, what What will be that one thing that you can tell somebody that that one bit of information that if they really take home with them would actually create for them a happier existence moving forward? Well, I, I mentioned it earlier. For me, it's about thinking about, I don't want to have regrets when I'm older. So yes, you can sit down, you can flick through your phone, you can do this, or you can get up and you can train. You can move your body, you can move your mind, you can read books, you can educate yourself. You can take, and it's not going to, as I said, it's not happening overnight, but little by little, you're going to improve. I've been speaking for seven years and it took me five years before I even made it to the point of jumping off and going full circle. Now it's been seven years because I have that two years of lockdown and now I'm building momentum again. It's not an overnight success, but I'm too stubborn to give up. So find that inner stubbornness and know what you're going for. I know what I'm going for and I know why I'm going for that. For my daughter, for my wife, for my family. And like I said, it all comes down to mindset and I know so long as I keep moving forward, so long as I keep moving forward, it's not going to just be forward or it's going to be forwards and upwards. And then you also get that exponential growth. So it's it's going to be slow. 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 You get a little bit of traction. And then before you know it, it kicks up. And that's what it's all about. Just turn the phone off. Put the popcorn down to the side. Pick up some water. Rehydrate. Because really, we're chronically dehydrated as a society. Rehydrate. Get out there, move your body, move your mind. And you, you'll thank me for it in three months, six months, 12 months time. Oh, absolutely. They should definitely be waiting outside your virtual door right now to for you to let them in your five pillars, um, you know, three pillar course. Now, yeah. David, I know you and I could go on and on and there's so much that we could <laughs> unravel. Um, I cannot believe it's taken us this while, but things do happen for a reason. You know what I mean? We should mm -hmm. definitely 
um, stay connected. And I really appreciate um, what you're bringing to the table because we all face adversity from time to time. But some of us, mm -hmm. as you have heard from David, are able to flourish even when things get tough or difficult. He's lost his knees. Mm -hmm. He's lost an arm. And, you know, he's went on and started using parts of his body that will not break now, no matter what we try and do. His tongue is going to yeah. be a force for reason. <laughs> and while other people seem to struggle to getting out of bed in the morning you've heard how david has been through every single thing that could have stopped him dead on his tracks you my friend that's watching this show right now i want you to be one of the people that will actually go out create a business that's profitable and enjoyable mm. and not let anything stop you because as you have he heard and as you know successful people have found a way to jump hurdles yeah. and navigate around any seemingly um, you know, roadblock that might come their way, something that would stop um, a lot of people dead in their tracks. David, I really mm. appreciate your time today. My pleasure. And thank you very much for having me on, on your podcast. I'm so excited. And I just love spreading my message, helping as many people as I can. So Prosper, I just want to thank you so much for this opportunity. Fantastic. Thank you once again.